Hi, I'm Elizabeth Gearhart. I'm a patent agent at Gearhart Law, and I am here with the founder and owner of Gearhart Law, the big guy himself, Richard Gearhart. And we have a pretty interesting topic to talk about right now. What I wanted to talk about today was how in the tech world, um, there's kind of a debate going on right now. You know, should I file uh, a patent on my technology or shouldn't I? And so I kind of wanted to discuss the pros and cons of filing a patent on software. There's a lot of open source software and people like to use that and they're like, well, everything should be open source and, you know, but what do the big companies do? Do they, they is all their stuff well, open source like or do they? That's a trick question. Or do they Because get you, you know exactly what the answer to that <laughs> I is. Do know the answer. <laughs> the answer is, of course, they file lots of patents. And so it's, uh, What's, what's good for thee is not what's good for me kind of <laughs> attitude sometimes. So yeah, some of the biggest patent filers are the large software companies, Microsoft, Apple, uh, Sun Microsystems. IBM's a huge one. IBM, they're like, they're, you know this, that they're the number one patent filer. Thousands of patents a year. Absolutely. Yeah. They, and they routinely top the list of one of the most active patent filers, so. Which is funny because you would think that bio, uh, pharmaceuticals and biotechs, where the patent is really the lifeblood because that's what they sell when they sell the firm, would be number one, but it's tech companies. Right, absolutely. And part of it's just the volume of, of tech projects versus the volume of, of you know, biotech projects. Uh, that plays in, a role in it, but certainly in terms of raw numbers, the number of software patents uh, filed by the patent office is like at the patent office is like the largest category so you're you're absolutely right on that some of the things that people say uh with the pros and cons of the software patents is well number one the software is always always changing so if i file a patent today and in three years we rewrite the application the patent may or may not cover the software so that's like a con and then Another con is, is that the patent applications publish, right? So everybody knows what you did. So everybody knows what you did. Right. And so it may not be so protectable. But there are strategies for dealing with those issues. Uh, and any software company that has something that's innovative should think about protecting their, their, uh, their ideas. So I'm just wondering because I have written patent applications in the past, I've never done software, but if you make the claims, which are the heart of the patent application and what the patent office examines, if you make them broad enough, could they carry over and protect the next iteration of whatever program you're writing? Well, that's the whole, that's the idea behind a patent. The idea is to protect as many variations on an idea as possible. So for example, if I were to file a patent on a desk, I would want to cover glass, plastic, metal, all sorts of different, you know, different materials. I would cover different shapes, you know, three legs, four legs, round top, elliptical top, rectangular top. The idea is to protect the concept of a desk and to protect as many variations on it as I can. And so in some patents, you can protect a lot of variations if there aren't a lot of previous patents in the technology. Uh, in other cases, you have to have, a, have to have narrower claims. And so it really depends on the invention. And so um, my point would be is that if you have an innovative software product, you need to talk with a past, you know, patent professional. Uh, preferably somebody at Gerhardt Law, but at least uh, another professional, find out what your options really are. And then you can make an informed decision. And another piece of advice that should not be um, uh, dismissed is that you need to do a patent search to make sure that somebody hasn't already filed a patent on your project and that they could block you. So you could spend lots of time and money investing in a new technology and find out at the end of the process that somebody has done exactly the same thing, they filed a patent on it, and you have to stop and drop everything because you didn't do your research ahead of time. 
Right. So that's called a freedom to operate, right? Absolutely. So freedom to operate means that you see if there's anything else that could block you from operating. Right. Gives you the freedom. You to have operate. the freedom to operate. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Good choice so, of words. <laughs> so we do searches to see that there's nothing else close out there so we can decide that, yes, you may be able to get a patent on this and we should draft a patent application. Right. But we can also do them to make sure there's nothing blocking you if you can't get a patent application. Right, and that should be a first step at, in any technical project um, that where you're creating technology, you always want to check first before you put a lot of time in. And then sometimes your may idea may be partially blocked, and so if you see what the other patents are, you may be able to design around those patents and still achieve your goal, but it's much harder to do at the end of the project after everything's set. So um, even if you decide you don't want a patent, you need to look before you leap. What about copyright? Copyright is another way that software is protected. Um, it's relatively inexpensive. It protects just exactly how the software is coded. So it protects the line-by-line -line software code, which for certain types of applications is a perfect type of protection. But it tends not to protect the concept. and so. It's two different types of protections. Again, you need to talk with an expert in the area to figure out the best and most cost-effective course. So if you have a copyright on your program and then you debug it and change some of the code, you no longer have that copyright? You could file a new copyright. Um, chances are good that if the changes are minor, your current copyright would still cover um, your, your software program. Uh, it just depends on the extent of the changes. And uh, where copyright is valuable is if you're supplying your uh, software to consumers on a disk and you're making multiple copies of the same software over and over again and you want to prevent it from being pirated so somebody else gets a copy of the CD or the download and they duplicate it and then they start selling it as counterfeit, um, counterfeit software, copyrights are extremely valuable in that situation to prevent infringement. Do you have a copyright automatically? You do. But you probably need a federally registered copyright to go after anybody in court? Is that right? Well, or? There's advantages to the f registering the copyright. It's not that expensive. Uh, and you get statutory damages, which means that the court can set an amount for each infringement, and that if, if somebody's making you know, duplicate copies of your software, then that can, that can be substantial damages. So patent or copyright, I mean, it, does it just go case by case? It really depends on what the application is, how novel the technology is, and you know, what your business goals are. Should you patent software? Should you not? Well, you got to ask an attorney, <laughs> a patent attorney. Richard's pretty good. You might want to ask him. Feel free so, to call us anytime, yes. and so, we'd be happy to discuss it with you. Yeah. yeah, if you have any questions, give us a call at Gearheart Law.